This video is about writing formulae for ionic compounds. In your examination you might be asked to write the formula for a compound provided that you are given the positive ion and the negative ion. Examples of ionic substances would include things like sodium chloride and um, magnesium chloride for example. Now if we have a look at these two compounds, um, you'll notice that there is one sodium ion and one chloride ion in this formula. We know this because there's no small numbers here to tell us otherwise. So if there's no small numbers, that just means there's one of each one. Whereas in magnesium chloride, you can see next to magnesium there's no number, so there's one magnesium ion but for the chloride part there's a number two which tells us that there are two chloride ions and we need to think about why this is and the reason for this is due to the charges on the ions themselves so for example sodium ion has a plus charge Na plus and the chloride ion has a single negative charge which we'll write here as Cl minus. So what you're looking for in an ionic compound is for the charges of the ions to equal out. And as you can see here we've got one positive charge with a plus and one negative charge with a minus. So the positive cancelled out cancels out the minus and we have no overall charge on the compound. So we just need one sodium and one chloride ion. Over here, however, we have magnesium, which is Mg2 plus this time, and a chloride ion, which is Cl minus. So hopefully you'll be able to see that to cancel out the two pluses, we will need two lots of the chloride ion and that's how you end up with 1mg and 2Cl chloride ions and hence you have MgCl2 here but you just have NaCl in this example. I'm going to do a few more examples here to help you out with this. So. If we wanted to write the formula for hydrogen chloride, we'd need to break it down and have a look at the ions involved. So we've got hydrogen, and I've given you that here, that is H+. And we've got chloride, which from over here is Cl-. And we need to count how many pluses and minuses we've got, so we've just got one plus, and one minus. They cancel each other out, so we just need one of each one in the formula. So we end up with HCl. And I'd already written that over there. Okay, so this is hydrogen chloride. Okay, and that's how we get to this, because we have one plus, one minus, so we end up with HCl. If, however, I asked you to write the formula for magnesium bromide, you'll take the two ions in turn, so you've got magnesium, which is Mg2+, and bromide, which is Br-. Now this time, because we have two pluses, and one minus, this doesn't balance out, so we can't just write MgBr. Instead, we need two lots of bromide ions to cancel out the two positive charges. So the formula will be Mg, because we just need one of those, and Br2. The important thing is that when you write these formulae, you put the numbers in subscript that means just below they don't go above they go just below hence the br2 here 
and the MgCl2 over here. If we were to write potassium oxide, take our first ion in there, potassium, which is K+, plus, and our oxide ion, which is O2-, minus. This time, again, it's not balanced. We've only got one plus and two minuses from the O2 minus. So this time we need two lots of potassium to balance out the oxygen. So our formula would be K2, which is showing two lots of potassium, and O, one lot of oxygen, K2O. Now for a tricky one. If we were asked for calcium nitrate, this is a tricky one because the ion that we're talking about over here contains two different elements inside. It's a nitrate, so it contains nitrogen and oxygen. So it's a little bit more complicated than the ones we've done before. The important thing is this whole thing always stays together. As, um, and we treat it just as one ion together, so never try and put any numbers next to the N. For the calcium nitrate, let's take the calcium first of all, Ca2+, plus, and the nitrate, which is NO3-. minus. So we've got two pluses, one minus, and we need to be able to balance those out. And to do that, we'd need two lots of nitrate. And to do this, we write the Ca, and this is the important bit. The nitrate has all got to go in brackets to say that you're having two lots of the whole thing. And then the two goes outside like that. So Ca, NO3 in brackets, and a subscript 2 at the bottom. OK, here's a few for you to try. Using the ions on this side over here, try and write the compound formulae for calcium oxide, aluminium oxide and potassium sulphate. Pause the video now and give those a go. OK, calcium from here, you should have got a Ca2+, and the oxide is O2-, minus, so we've got two pluses two minuses, so they're already balanced out and therefore we just need one of each ion to make CaO. For aluminium oxide, over here we've got aluminium is Al3+, plus, and we've got oxide which is O2-. Minus. In this case we've got three pluses and two minuses. So to try and balance these out, we can have two aluminiums and three oxygens. So we'd end up with Al2O3. Okay, and the Al2O3 would then give us six pluses and six minuses therefore they would all balance out. So that is our formula for aluminium oxide. And finally potassium sulphate, we've got K plus here and sulphate which is SO4 2 minus. We've got um, one plus at the moment and two minuses so we need to double up the pluses, so double up the potassium and we just need one of the sulphate ion so this would be the formula for potassium sulphate very well done if you got all of those correct